All right, frank conversation with uh, Brian Mulefe is with me now in uh, the studio here in Linden in South Africa. Yeah, you're saying? By the way, sometimes I think that those judges yeah. had not read those papers properly. But then it's just a thought that I have. But, I mean, I think you've appealed, what, three times now already? No, they did not hear the appeal. They did not hear the appeal? No, they, you take, you refused, taken it to the, they refused you, you, leave to appeal. Yes. Yeah. Because they, that they, is they, not, they fundamentally say they, there's nothing that you're going to submit to them that is any different from these facts. Yes, that is what they said. But they did not hear the appeal. They did not hear what we were going to say. They just thought that there was nothing else that we could say. Are you simply stalling the inevitable here in terms of... Uh, uh, what is the inevitable? Well, I mean... Paying back the money that was not supposed to have been paid to No. You. They, 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 the money is supposed to be paid back. Right? Yeah. But how much is it? The judge said that I owe 10.7 million. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I've never received 10.7 million. I received about 7.5 million. And of that 7.5 million, I came with 4.2 million and I made contributions. The judge didn't take that into consideration. Now the pension fund is not able to attach my property because that amount of the judgment is wrong. The pension fund is saying they need to go back to court to correct that, which is what I was trying to do through the appeal. And nobody listened up to the constitutional court. Nobody listened that I never received 10.7 million. I never received 30 million. I never received 10.7 million. I got 7.5 million rand or thereabouts. Yeah. But I came with 4.2 million of my own. So where did the judge get the 10.7 million so, from? Uh, the, where, where did the calculation then of 30 million come from? I don't know. It's between those who made this arrangement? And it's that between is the pension the fund. The chairperson of the board and the pension and fund? And the pension fund. That was between ESCOM and the pension fund. Let me take a call. Godfrey in Soweto, hi. Hello, hello, good people in the studio. Good evening. Good, good evening. evening, good evening, Godfrey. Yes, and that's the Your issue of questioning the price of the coal out of that 40 years contract, it was one of the problems. And the issue of the money that you're supposed to get, because you are too black, the wife, the attend died in order to determine the money that you need to get. I'm not surprised. Why are we under, under this condition? Lastly, I will say to you, you and Mr. Oko, you must go back to ESCOM and solve the problem. I think that one president needs to consider that. Lastly, lastly, Tulima Tontela was too white. Today, Rebona Tulima Tontela is a senior, the current one, uh, because treatment is not the same. She was bullying everyone, but today, they don't even recognize the black excellence. But I'm saying to you, you and Coco, you must go back to ESCOM and solve our problem. Because currently now, they cannot even explain what is the problem. They don't even understand. I don't understand anything. Okay. So, but to us, South African people who said to you that Mr. Salabilu, Ms. Kawamoya, Rabonor Baliza, Go on three. Let's give it there. Go three is in. So, what, do you believe that uh, uh, it's political? Your... Well, uh, I want to agree with Godfrey that the, the, the genesis of the problem, in my opinion, was the refusal to grant uh, Glenco the increase from 150 to 530 which we could not afford. But the way those guys talked, you know, Mr. Mulefe, if you don't give us this increase, we're going to stop the supply of coal to Henrina, and you're going to have more load shedding. And I said, if that is a threat, you're putting a gun to my head, pull the trigger. So what, what, what do you and make And in of... fact, they did stop the supply of, yeah. of coal, but we did not load shed. Right. We made other plans. We had to scavenge right. for coal to supply Henrina. Let's, let's when talk, they stop let's talk about the supply the, of coal. The, the, the latest, I had uh, a feeling, Sunday Times, uh, I had a feeling that Glencore felt entitled, entitled to vary a valid and legal contract yeah. that was prejudicial to ESCO. I don't understand why they felt that way. 
I still don't. Ian Oberholzer on uh, uh, the issue of um, uh, load shedding, stage six, saying this is because of contracts that uh, were entered into by Brian Molefe when he was still CEO, where he, what is it, escalated or expedited the plan for BEE suppliers to bring coal. And those guys, are, we're, we're taking advantage of that and we're bringing coal that is substandard. By, by blaming the current load shedding on BEE, which was government policy, by the way, when we did it. Uh, I think the Sunday Times says I was very vigorous. Yeah. Just, because BEE, you have to be vigorous about it. You have to be, you have to do it. Uh, but Ian Overholzer has just exposed himself as an unreconstructed, untransformed cult. Because BEE was a policy of the government. If three years later he has those contracts, and those people are not delivering the correct quality of coal. He's supposed to tell them that you're not delivering the correct quality to put them on terms and even to fire them. Yeah. Why does he not do that and suddenly allow the situation to deteriorate to the point that it causes load shedding and then blame it on Molefe and BEE? He's wrong. He's a coot. He's blind. He doesn't understand. Okay, I'm told that we've got the uh, former public protector on the line, Tulima Donsela, wanting to uh, respond to what uh, Brian is saying. Uh, 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 Metuli, hi, thank you for uh, giving us a call this evening. Um, uh, Brian Mulley for today, uh, again, reiterating that you impeded on his dignity. You, you really uh, cornered him in a sense that he had no option. A Chapter 9 institution had uh, released allegations uh, against him without giving him an opportunity to respond to them. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Hello. Thank you for the privilege and good evening to Mr. Mulefe. Um, the allegation is not true and the reports refuse that. As CEO of ESCOM, Mr. Mulefe was the very first person to be informed of the allegations and asked to, to comment, then specifically asked specific questions about um, the, the contracts that were in question and about his relationship with the Gupta. Now, of course, he, he raises questions, for example, about the numbers, saying in your report, you're not writing which number were you looking at, what, what cell phone number was it, uh, uh, it belonged to who, that phone, uh, and, and things like that. And how, 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 how sure are you that he was in that proximity? What, what have you got to back that statement that he was there 19 times? <laughs> Is he for real? <laughs> because initially he said he had never been to such a world. When he realized that we had done the cell phone creation, his statement changed to he, want, he went there to ship in. So is the story now changing about which number did we look at? But can I ask the public protector a question? Yes, go ahead. Uh, Madam public, uh, former public protector. Yes. Did you ever call me in to ask me about the telephone calls? No, we didn't call you. But to right ask there, the right calls. there, your answer of no, you've just broken the law because there were allegations that were in front of you as the public protector, and you never confronted me with the allegations. Mr. And you Mr. never Mr. gave me an opportunity to, to express my view, my side of the story. Yeah. Maybe it is you that I would have told yeah. that I was at the Shebin. But Mr. you Mr. did not Mr. ask me. Mr. Mr. Let, let, let me allow I, I have nothing further to, to say to, to the public to, to protector. Respond. She just said no, she did not no, confront Mr. me with it. Okay, with, let, with let, the, let me allow you to respond. The Public yes. Protector yes. Act is very clear. Yeah. When the public protector comes across allegations, the first thing they do is inform you about it before they even write the report. Okay. Even when they write the report, before the report is they, finalized, they, they it is given to you right. to make further comments. Okay. She didn't. Advocate Matunzel? That is not true. Firstly, the public protector... But you have just case. answered no to my question. Mr. Blefe, can you calm down, you say? No, Mr. I can't calm down, Advocate, because for three, four years, you have been the result of the impugning of my dignity. How can I come down? You, you would not become as well if you are sitting in my position. 
But you're impugning your own dignity, say, and you did so during the investigation. Let, let's just go back to the investigation. All the investigation did was in line with the public protector act and in line with the Constitution. And Section 79 of the public protector act says when there is evidence that implicates a person, that person should be informed accordingly and you were informed accordingly. But long before you were sent a Section 79 notice, you were informed that there were allegations against you. You were informed that there were allegations against the entire leadership of ESCOM. And regarding the issue of um, the cell phone triaging, you were asked what is your... You were asked if you have ever been there, and you denied. Then we had to verify your denial, and when we verified it, we found you wanting. No, no you I, I have. I have never denied knowing the Guptas, and I've never denied having been to their house. Yeah, you are not telling the truth, Abu. Your, 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 your answer around the uh, yes. Simpson World Shibin. What was that answer? Uh, uh, mean, mean what happened that? is that on that day of the, uh, I think it was the results announcement, right? That morning, I arrived to ESCOM at the ESCO meeting. And um, the members of ESCO were sitting there. And I said to them, can you believe that the public protector says, my phone was in the sex and world area? That's all she said. She never said I was at the Gupta's house. She said, my phone was in the sex and world area. Now, I have not been told how I'm going to ask for details of that allegation or that I was in the sex and world area, what I had been doing, whether there are phones that were tapped, whether there were conversations that were tapped, and so on and so forth. So one man in the, in the, in the meeting, Mr. Chaucer, who said, yeah, but you know, if it was my phone, it would have been more because there's a Shebin there. Later on, during the press conference, I said, you know, the public protector says I was in the sex and world area. And Chose says there's a Shebin there. How does the public protector know that I was maybe at that Shebin? Do you know the Sunday Times had to retract the statement that says I said I was at the Shebin? Mm. Because Judge Mweb, the press ombudsman, ruled that I never said so. Right. So you never said you were at the Shebin? I didn't say I was at the Shebin. Yeah, you said somebody... I said, Chose says said, there's a Shebin right, there. Right. So you, you could have been there. And you said, so you were afraid to tell your yeah, young wife I, I even the said, you frequented the Shebin. I even said in that, uh, in that uh, press statement, yeah. I mean, in press conference, that every day when I travel home to yeah. Pretoria, yeah. I pass two kilometers from Tizas in Midrand on the highway. Yeah. So if you take my cell phone records, they will also show that Monday to Friday, two times a day, I'm near Tizas. What does it, what does it, what does it, what does it mean? Let's because that break. was the quality of the evidence. Let's take a break. We'll continue with uh, Brian Molefe after this and take uh, some of your calls as well. We invite you uh, to uh, give us a call uh, so that uh, we can, uh, of course, try and get uh, some uh, of your views on this. We'll get your headlines as well as get to those calls. You're on your view with News of Africa, Channel 405. Do stay with us.